Thank you for your patience. Welcome, my name is Jody Craner. I'm with the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Institute. Thank you for taking the time to join us for today's webinar on Wisconsin's HR Care Kit. Our presenters are Lynn Gall, Gall and Harriet Redman from the Wisconsin Family and Caregiver Support Alliance. Lynn manages the Family Caregiver Support and Lifespan Respite Programs for the Wisconsin Department of Health Services. She has been appointed to the National Raised Family Caregiving Advisory Council, which advises administration for community living on the best ways to implement and update the recent adapted national strategy to support caregiving. Lynn has been employed by the state of Wisconsin for uh, 25 years, focusing on family caregiver support and respite for the past 15 and 10 years working with DHS Tribal Affairs Office overseeing programs and policies that affect tribal nations across Wisconsin. Harriet is the founder of, and former executive director of Wisconsin Inc., a nonprofit organization established in 1998 and dedicated to the interests of children and adults who are siblings who have siblings with disabilities and long-term illnesses. Harriet organizes efforts in her community to address affordable housing needs for people with disability and serves on the Outagamie County Aging and Long-Term Support Committee. She co-leads the Empowering Employers Work Group along with Lynn with the Wisconsin Family and Caregiver Support Alliance. As you have just heard, Lynn and Harriet bring a wealth of experience and expertise so it is my pleasure to turn over the webinar to them to present on this innovative kit. Well, thank you, Jody, and hello, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting us today to speak to you about our employment, um, our HR care kit, and our employment in, to employer engagement uh, work group. The Wisconsin. Uh, well, I'll start out by saying that um, I do work for the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, but I really am here today representing the Wisconsin Family and Caregiver Support Alliance, which um, has become a huge part of my work in the last, say, six years or so. And um, I'm pleased to have my, my co-chair for the Employer Engagement Work Group with me today, which is Harriet, who you just heard about. Um, could you advance the slide, please? Um, what you're seeing here is an overview sort of of our of what the alliance is. If you haven't heard of us, we are a group of aging, disability, and um, I guess pretty much anybody, aging, disability, respite, and other organizations, anybody who cares about caregivers. Uh, we came together about six years ago to really talk about how we can cross, get across those silos and come together in a way that we can work together and maybe have a bigger impact than we were having separately and individually. And what we did was we created this alliance and this work group that we're gonna talk about today, um, the HR Care Kit we created, it was just one of five work groups that our alliance has. On the slide, you see our goals on the, on the left-hand side there about increasing outreach and awareness and promote, promoting advocacy efforts um, improving systems navigation, expanding family and caregiver supports, just like, you know, and what the offerings are, and then strengthening community supports. That's really what we work on across the board. Um, I'm not going to go through our vision and mission statement. You can read those on your own. But I just did want to point out that if anybody today, if you're inspired after listening to us speak and would like to get more involved either in this work group that we're going to talk about or one of the other four work groups that you can see um, at wisconsincaregiver.org is our website. Under the Alliance tab, you can read all about our Alliance and the work groups that we offer. So I just wanted to make sure that um, you knew that you're welcome to join us and we're happy to have anybody who, who shares our, our mission and wants to have a bigger impact. Harriet? Great. Well, thank you, Lynn, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, if, Jody, you would um, advance the slide, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Uh, what we're going to do today is focus on one particular project that the uh, work group, the uh, Engaging Employer work group, uh, has been working on. 
Um, if you want to click that again, it'll show up. There we go. So we've been uh, saying the words HR Care Kit um, as we've introduced this um, uh, webinar today. And HR stands for Human Resource um, or Harriet Redmond, however you want to look at that. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a resource for human relation um, professionals but a whole lot more, um, uh, a care kit that is useful to an employer, a manager, um, and anyone attending this webinar, uh, because we, we created it in order to help individuals work with employers to examine how much of their workforce are caregivers. Um, we know that most family caregivers are in the workforce. They need to work. Uh, they need that income. And we also know that most employers have a lot more caregivers uh, working for them than they may even realize. Uh, we estimate that about 75% of um, employees have at least at one time uh, been a caregiver while they were uh, working. So, um, our, our work group wanted to pull together some resources and some um, uh, processes to help employers strategize how they can be better um, supporters of those caregivers, not only for the benefit of the caregiver, but for the benefit of the company who wants to retain those employees and even attract more employees who may um, may be great workers, but they also have caregiving responsibilities as well. We hope that um, you will take this kit and um, be able to use it um, so that those who are perhaps caregiving for uh, parents or spouses or siblings with dementia or other um, uh, disabilities will have some ideas, we'll have some um, resources that, that they can tap. You are a resource to those employers. Uh, in your local area, you are there for them. They may not know that yet. They may not realize that you are a resource to a challenging issue. And this issue has become more and more pronounced for employers. Um, we developed the kit uh, for Wisconsin, but the reality is that there are other kits that are also available that we also um, recommend. The AARP has a, a wonderful um, guide uh, supporting caregivers in the workplace, and our care kit has that resource listed as well. Um, Lynn and I recently, uh, along with some of the other members of um, our group, um, presented to the SHRM, uh, Wisconsin SHRM Conference, that's the Society of Human Resource Managers. Um, and they have some excellent materials as well, uh, both locally and nationally. Um, Jody, you can move forward. Thank you. So why is this such a big deal? If you have talked to any employers recently um, and asked them, you know, what are What's keeping you up at night? What's what is uh, an issue that you're dealing with that maybe you did you didn't deal with ten years ago? Um, they will tell you about caregivers. Um, they may be telling you about parents who are needing care for their kids, but it's become more and more um, evident that caregiving is a lifespan issue. It's not just a caregiving issue for young parents. Um, and that this is having an impact on employers. The, um, the club sandwich generation is how we describe it with our siblings. Um, when a sibling has a brother or sister with a disability, they also have aging parents who may need them. They may also have growing children or other responsibilities that need them. And then they have a, um, a sibling with disabilities. We call that the club sandwich generation. You may be more familiar with the sandwich generation. And that's where a good deal of workers are right now. That's their um, 
uh, uh, most productive work years. Um, and yet they have other responsibilities for caregiving. Um, as I said before, 73% of all employees have some type of current caregiving responsibilities, and they're not just caring for the young, they're, they're caring for a whole lifespan of, of needs. In fact, the irony uh, of me presenting this with Lynn today is I have my ears open because I'm caregiving my son who has disabilities. Um, he's downstairs and I'm, I have my ear open. Um, uh, on that because um, his respite provider is due to come in just a few minutes. So I'm keeping my ears open for that, tr that transfer. But um, it, employers are noticing, noticing this because um, their employment is dropping. People are leaving work. People are not showing up for work. And many times it's because of caregiving issues. It's because they are um, needed by a family caregiver, family member um, for appointments or or direct care, um, and they they simply can't um, get to work at the time they're um, required to be there. Um, you can move to the next one, Jody. So there are several facts here that that pertain to all of us between now and two thousand forty. Now I want to I want you to think about how old are you going to be. It's 16 years from now, so take your age and add 16 years. Where are you going to be in this um, um, uh, population of caregivers and those who need care? But by 2040, the, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services estimates that the number of people living with dementia in their homes will increase by 86.8%. You probably know that um, statistic. It's important that employers know that too, so they can anticipate. Oops, we're going the wrong way. There we go. Uh, Alzheimer's Association, there's lots of facts and figures there. Um, and as you know, the aged 65 and older is growing faster than the other um, levels of population. 191,000 family caregivers provide 213 million hours of unpaid care. That's remarkable. Um, but it's the reality. And nearly 60% also work a paying job. So this is um, an issue that employers uh, not only need to uh, be aware of, but make some plans. Uh, moving ahead. So the um, HR Care Kit is designed to help the human resource managers and, and other um, uh, levels of employers understand and address the issues they are facing. Um, so obviously that's that's uh, me and I, my son. Um, but the facts are employers who are aware of the needs of working caregivers are developing ways of addressing them and they are winning. They are making progress. They're retaining employees. They're improving their cultures at um, their work. I, I spoke yesterday with a, a HR person from Promega, and she was saying that as soon as they started offering benefits, more and more people came to ask questions and revealed themselves as caregivers. That was a huge um, advancement in the whole culture of their organization. Um, because it did a couple of things. One, people were getting what they needed, but they also were saying as a company, it's okay to be a caregiver. We, we recognize you, we see you. And then other employees came to the aid of one another and their whole culture improved. Um, so there's some advantages there too. Um, and, uh, the um, Massachusetts Business Roundtable recommends employers take an assessment of um, how many of their employees are caregivers. And a lot of businesses have done this. We make it possible through the care kit that they can get a free survey tool through the University of Wisconsin Extension. Um, and it's absolutely um, free. Another um, uh, study shows that um, Employees seldom use FMLA. Um, it doesn't cover their salaries and they're afraid to use it because they know that 
um, or they believe that at some point their situation is is going to become more of a crisis. So they're saving that up. Um, and so they hesitate to use much of it at all. And they also report they felt they could continue meeting their work and home responsibilities for longer if they just had a little more help. They're not asking for um, lots of time off or lots of paid uh, release time. They may be asking for what you have right in your um, uh, uh, programming, and that is they're looking for education. Uh, let's move on. All right. So um, that's what the care kit looks like. You can find it at wisconsincaregiver.org. Um, uh, it's right on the front page. You'll find uh, a link to that. Um, and we, um, as, as Lynn mentioned, over the last six years, we've been conducting our own research as well as looking into the national research um, so uh, uh, the research data is in this care kit. Also stories. Um, we talked to caregivers and their experience uh, working full or part time and what they had to do um, in order to make it all work. And oftentimes they, um, they had to take days off. They had to um, go in late. Um, they, they had to accommodate their um uh, work life um, in order to provide care for their loved one. Um, those who had employers who they could talk to and who could help them make adjustments, um, they they were uh, much healthier and had a better relationship with their um, employment than than those who um, didn't feel they could they could talk to their uh, managers about it. Um, you can move to the next one. And I believe, Lynn, you're going to talk about this. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Harriet. Um, yeah, uh, she touched on this uh, idea of about Wisconsin's workforce is lagging behind our aging population. You probably noticed on the front of the care kit, there's the term changing the world of work in Wisconsin. I think we all kind of saw the world of work change a little bit during during COVID. Um, some of us, it was kind of, kind of interesting that we were working on this project and then um, COVID came along and it kind of actually sort of forced a few of the things that we were, you know, recommending that you can do to make life easier for caregivers, like being able to be flexible to work at home more hours um, and those sorts of things start just kind of became the norm because of COVID. But um, as you can see from this map, this looks at the Wisconsin's prime working age population, which is age 20 to 64. And looking at um, the number of people in the workforce between year 2000 and 2040. And you can see that we kind of hit our peak there for the number of people in the workforce around 2010, 20, 2008, well, 2008 probably, um, somewhere around there. Um, and then it's going down versus on the other side, the other chart is Wisconsin's population, population age 65 and older, which is steadily go, grow, going up and is going to be on that trend till at least 2040 and beyond. So, um, that's just the, the visual I wanted to give you because I think we talk about it and sometimes I wonder how many people really understand the difference and how many employers um, realize this. So when we talk about this issue, this isn't something that's like, well, we think it's, it's kind of a good thing to do right now. I mean, we're talking about a change in the way we work in Wisconsin, not just in Wisconsin, but really in our whole nation. It's happening everywhere, and probably actually the whole world is is getting older. Um, so it's going to impact the number of people they have available to hire. And so when they do find a good person, they're want to, going to want to keep them. And what can we do as a network to help? That's um, really why the Care Kit is there, and we hope you can be our partner in helping um, employers look at us as a partner, not as somebody who's telling them what they should do, but as a resource. Really, um, the care kit 
at, toward the end of it, you'll see there's a list of a lot of resources and we've got links in there. We want them to look at our aging and disability resource centers as another, something they can use in their company. These are free resources that are available to them and to their employees. So in addition to the benefits and the other things, um, perks that they might offer to their employees, they do also have all of these community resources that a lot of us on this call today can offer them and to make sure that they know we're here to help support them and um, be partners in this. Thank you. Um, so really the HR Care Kit focuses heavily on educating employers about the free education and community services that are out there to all employers and employees. Um, we expect that you probably run into the same situation that we do with caregivers who often don't realize they even are caregivers. They just identify themselves as a spouse or a sister or a child or a grandchild or a parent, whatever, uh, or even a friend. And they say, I'm not a caregiver. I just, you know, this is just something I do. So if employers can help them self-identify as well, that can help them bring them into our agencies and to start working with the professionals that we have to offer in addition to working with their own human resources departments. But if they don't ever identify as a caregiver, it's gonna be difficult for them ever to reach out for, for support um, in order to, to have that balance in life that they need. In addition, um, those people who don't self-identify will probably never reach out to their employer for support because they're gonna think they're an isolated case. Like what I'm going through is something that nobody else understands. And so one of the messages, a very strong message we have for employers is that to ask them to step up and be that person who says, okay, we, we see you, we recognize you, and you're an important and valued um, group of people in our, in our company and our organization, wherever whatever it happens to be, and to that it's okay, and to make it okay to talk about that in the workplace, because um, people do do it sort of in, at the water cooler, or they'll seek, seek each other out, caregivers somehow find each other, we, we know that, and they'll try to support each other, but if we could do it more systematically, um, I think that would be really a, take some stress and worry off a lot of people's shoulders to know that they don't have to hide this and there won't be any repercussions in the workplace um, to say I have this extra responsibility and to have their coworkers either resent it or their boss not give them promotions. It's a real fear for these caregivers. Um, and it really doesn't matter at what level of management they may be. They're, we're not right. talking about just em, employees who may be entry level. We're talking about vice presidents and, and people who have quite substantial jobs. And yet, because of caregiving responsibilities, they often quit. They quit their career. They quit their job. Whereas if they had a little more support or understanding with their employer, they may not have to make that um, extreme of a sacrifice. I was just talking to right. a woman the other day that I congratulated her on um, a, a job that that she got since the last time I'd seen her, which is a little over a year. And she said, uh, yes, thank you, but I'm quitting on Friday. And I was shocked because she is a very competent, um, valued employee. Um, and yet, because of caregiving responsibilities, she she felt she had to, to end that relationship. I I mean, I just felt, um, wow, everybody loses here. Yeah, and that's a good point because it's not only the people who are currently caregiving that employers need to think about, but those who, you know, see in the corner of the slide, it says one in six non-caregiving employees expect to become one in the next two years. So even if they aren't, you know, they don't show up in the survey we're gonna talk about as being currently being a caregiver. I mean, everybody on the call here, my guessing is that a lot of you probably have been caregivers yourself and um, you might even in the next two years think, okay, there might be, I could be in that situation and it's very real. And that's just for, you know, and that's not even thinking about the, the, the accidents 
the unexpected diagnoses. You, you just never know what's coming around the corner. So being prepared for that is really important. Um, next slide, please. Um, another point um, that I think is important to make to employers is to realize that caregivers have some significant out-of-pocket expenses, whether you're helping a relative with, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's dementia or it could be somebody with a chronic illness or a disability, um, anything that requires you to put your own money into either bringing in out-of-home care or buying specialized equipment or medicines, um, all those things add up. And generally speaking, it costs between, you know, a family caregiver will spend a, about an extra 10000 to $11,000 a year um, out of their own pocket in some cases, um, depending on, you know, what the finances are of the person who's receiving the care. Oftentimes that comes out of the person's pocket. So they need that job. It's important that they keep it. And it's important that under, that employers understand how important that is to them. That, you know, being in this situation can be one of the most emotionally draining and financially straining experiences that any of us go through. And it can last six months, it could last six weeks, six months, six years or 30 years, you never know. Um, so that experience, that pressure experienced by working caregivers is substantial. Some of it's self-imposed, we know, because they, um, we worry about job security. Um, and if that employer can take some of that pressure off, that, that's a win for everyone. So next slide, please. So as we were saying, understanding when the employees and their caregiving roles is vital to starting to build an, a strategy that will be effective for retaining and attracting the employees. This survey tool, um, there's a, a code here that you can use um, to go right to the extension survey, but we use this in our alliance when, when we did, um, when it, we kind of tested it out as we were putting it together and saying, well, how's this work? And we did employ, um, we surveyed some employers and working caregivers and found it to be a wonderful tool that's out there and UW Extension is happy to, um, they won't like run it for you, but they will certainly answer questions for any employer who wants to use it. It's free to use. And one of the best things about it is that it's anonymous. Um, the, by anonymous, I mean when the employer gives it to the employees to take, it's all online, that all of the data comes back to them um, with no names attached to it. So the people taking the survey can feel confident that they won't be singled out in their workplace. They can answer, you know, I suppose if you work in a very small work office, you might be able to figure out who's who, but in, in a decent sized company, you shouldn't be able to figure out um, who is giving what response to the questions and hopefully people can be more honest and um, with what they need because that may be the only way some people feel comfortable. And um, most of the I... people on this call have an employer. So each one of you could um, ask your employer to participate in this free survey and find out what your own company, what your own agency may uh, learn about the makeup of their employees, how many of um, their employees are caregivers and what their needs are. We can start yeah. right in our own backyards. Right, and that's a great idea too, because I know if we're, we're asking you to take this out and, and you know, suggest it to other companies and really doing a dry run yourself, it makes you feel better, like you know what you're talking about, right? Um, so I really do, I, at the very least, visit the website, look at it, what it is and what it does, familiarize yourself with it, because I think it is a great tool that um, we have available here. We even found some that the Caregiver Coalition in New York was is using it. Um, we're like, oh, that's our survey. And how? And, they, and they're, they're out there promoting it too, a, var a variation, they made some slight variations on it, but it's basically coming through through UW Madison. So we're pretty proud that that we have that and should be using it. And one of the things in the care kit is that we really emphasize the role that supervisors can play in educating employers about that. Um, the, the supervisor, 
supervisors play a significant role in imp impacting how much stress an employee feels day to day. They set the tone for the organization in a lot of cases, either helping or impeding an, um, the ability to maintain balance in an employee's life. You know, we all know what it is to have a good manager or a bad manager, one who understands, one who, who gets it, who gives you a little slack um, to deal with these sorts of things in your life. And it makes all the difference. It really does. And so that's another one of the messages we have is that some of the things you can do don't have to be huge. It doesn't mean you have to get to have a whole new expensive benefit package mm -hmm. to give to your working caregivers. What it means is that you become more aware you make some small changes, you get more connected with people like us out in the community, connect them to resources that already exist, and maybe you do something internally too. Um, mm -hmm. But training those supervisors about how to do that um, is also there. We also have a link, I don't know what page it's on, but at the bottom of one of the pages in the toolkit, there is some free online um, supervisor training in this area, and I believe it's from AARP. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, okay. And that um, is great free resource that you can offer so that they, you know, they don't have to put money into it, um, just something they can ask their resources to do. I know we had um, this uh, um, statistic that's on this slide on a couple of times, but it's for emphasis. Um, one of the first um, opportunities I had when we started working on the care gift or, um, or the, the, the care kit was I was having a walk with um, a younger um, uh, a younger person who, uh, who worked for a different agency. And I asked her how things were going. And, and she said, fine, but I'm, I think I'm going to have to find a new place to work. And I said, really? Um, I thought you really enjoyed your job and, and you do such a good job with it. And she says, I do enjoy my job, but my parents are getting older and I think I'm probably going to have to become a caregiver for them in the next few years. And I don't think I can work where I work. And I said, well, have you talked to your supervisor about that? Well, no, my supervisors never mentioned caregiving or I don't know of anybody else in the company that, um, that, that has that shares this, this concern. And I thought, oh, and, and I shared with her, I said, there are more there than you probably even know. Bring it up to your supervisor, have a discussion about it. And don't assume that you have to leave the job that you love just because you are going to be a caregiver for your parents someday. But it really struck me how um, employees mm -hmm. think and how they, the lack of communication can get in their way and and deprive them of of um, things that they value. All right, thank you. That's a good point too. Uh, and because over the last few years, before when we had so many people available, I mean, those of us who worked in those years when job competition was really hard, there were like you know ten people for every job that was available, and it was sort of like, well, if you couldn't do what the boss wanted in the hours that the boss said. Um, sorry, you, you were you were dispensable, and you the next person would be hired. We're kind of we're not in that situation anymore. Where employers need us, and so um, if they take advantage of that, but use it to our advantage, I think, to get um, a little more flexibility or the sorts of things that we need. Um, next two slides are pages that are in our care kit that we also offer. The, this comes from the AARP um, document as well. It starts to get people, it's asking an employer to take inventory of its current status and to begin planning to make some of these improvements. Um, this worksheet helps employers gauge where they stand and to help them identify things that they may be able to do to start taking first steps. So as you see in the beginning, do they have a, a caregiver resource list that they make available to their, you know, to their employees? We kind of look at that as core, comprehensive, advanced. Um, they, that's put into a couple different categories and then they can mark off, okay, my company has that. And paid sick days that they can also use to care for a relative. Does your company have that? And they can mark it off and just kind of go through, through these things. Um, 
we did this with at the SHRM conference in a kind of an activity, a group activity. So if you were ever presenting this, th these are good uh, good pages to just give, say, okay, just take three minutes and fill this out. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's a good way to get them to start moving. Do you have any uh, support groups, in-house stress reduction programs? Um, not everything is on here. But and if you don't have it, if there's they don't put an X, then they can also always mark, okay, this is something that either we've been thinking about and just never put our energy into, or hey, that would probably be a really good idea and it can get them to start the wheels um, moving to start making some, some progress on that. Um, next page is starting to build a strategy, a strategy for your own organization. This also, uh, we used sitting down with, with people and saying or getting into groups with different people. Um, but this can certainly be done by any employer after you leave or in a small group setting too. Um, kind of asking them what stands out in the report for them and how many in the or organization are caregivers. Do they know that? And if they don't, does it make sense to do that survey that we talked about? Um, to kind of go through again, what resource, resources are currently available to support employees. And from this, from resources, it can be, you know, any information they might get from any of us, but it could also be, do they have a resource? Do they have a private room where they can go make a call during the day or take a call if they need to talk to a healthcare provider or a family member um, about something that might be, you know, a private confidential conversation? Is there a safe space where they can do that and not, you know, I remember how many times when we were still in the DHS building and I'd, there'd be people walking up and down the hallway on their phones, you know, and, the, and it echoes in there. If anybody's ever been in our building. And so they're trying to have this private conversation while it's echoing and people are walking down the hallways and it's like, oh, you know, you really should have a place to sit. And, and how can you even focus on what the doctor's saying or what the home health aide is saying or, you know, when you're kind of in the so make, just giving people a, a place to do that can be a huge thing that an employer can do. And um, it doesn't cost anything to do that. To, exactly, exactly. And plus it acknowledges that caregiving is is part of who an, who an employee is. They And they bring that to the to their work. Um, and the honest to God truth is they're going to take that call anyway, right? When it's your when if it's your parent or a family member or a good friend and something's happening. You're going to take that call somewhere, even if you're hiding in the bathroom. So you might as well give them a good place to do it so it's not um, another stressor in their life. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, that's uh, some strategies um, yeah. in that work group. And uh, back to you, Harriet. Well, as I mentioned yesterday, I was um, speaking with, this is Diana Clark that you see here, um, about um, their company. And of course, Promega is a huge company. It's global. It's all over the world. Um, but I asked her some questions about how, how did you start? How did you even think about this? And she said they started small and um, what they were, what they were getting from their managers were questions and referrals um, um, with regard to issues that caregivers were having just exactly what we've been talking about. Um, times when people need to step away from work and uh, take a phone call, make an appointment, attend an appointment, um, help an individual, uh, whether it's a, a child or a, a, a parent or a spouse, uh, with some daily living um, activities. Just all of those things um, em employees were having to deal with and they didn't know who to turn to, um, and and they didn't have um, any choices in their minds other than, um, you know, using up all their vacation and not taking a vacation in order to deal with the um, the needs of their their loved one, um, quitting, uh, going part time, uh, all kinds of things that that they thought they would have to do. Um, because they didn't think their employer would understand their needs. Um, so they were getting more and more and more of those inquiries and referrals. So they decided they needed to do something. And um, they um, they started to, 
they started with a very bold something. Not everybody come, not every company would do this or would need to do this, but they started by giving two weeks paid leave for anyone um, who had a who, who had a caregiving role, who was taking care of a family member or a neighbor, or they had a caregiving role, and um, they didn't know how many employees would take that. They didn't know how many employees there might be out there that had caregiving roles. Um, what they learned was there were a, a lot of um, people with caregiving roles um, and they didn't misuse their two weeks of paid leave. Um, they took it as they needed it and um, it began to grow and grow and they were retaining employees. Um, and then they started attracting employees. Word got out that Promega was um, acknowledging the role of caregivers and their competitors were finding out that this was an edge that um, Promega had in attracting employees too. So they have grown their program from a two week paid leave. Now they offer six weeks of paid leave for anyone who has a caregiving role, whether that's a, a new baby or they've just adopted a child taking care of a parent, taking care of a spouse, whatever kind of caregiving role that they um, they have, they can take paid leave to address um, their their needs. And that's an so, addition to, that's an addition to their regular vacation. just oh, make absolutely. That clear. It's pretty amazing yeah. that they're doing this. Yes. but they're finding that it is paying off because uh, retaining an employee is gold. To have to um, uh, uh, retrain new employees, that's very expensive and it's hard on the, um, on the company. Um, it's hard on the employees. So they definitely um, started small and have gone big. Not every company can do that. But um, in addition to the, that paid leave, which was kind of a bold first step, um, they also have improved their EAP. They have um, uh, utilized educational um, opportunities um, available in the community. They provide resources. Um, so it has changed the way they um, look at caregivers and their employees, and it's changed the culture themselves have started to put up um, job on job boards um, you know when when an employee might be available to help a caregiver um, they organize meal trains now not the company but the employees themselves because the culture of the organization has changed so that people they find themselves um, they, they find others who can um, support them and they can support the support the other caregivers and um it's made for a uh, a a great workplace as you can see they get top honors um when it comes to top places to work and yes we'll go on to um other ideas that we've heard from uh, wisconsin employers and we'll kind of go through these quickly um offering educational and brainstorming sessions um they can do that internally, or that may be something that as a professional, you walk in and say, I can offer um, your employees uh, an education session on this particular topic. Maybe it's on dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever your expertise. Um, and most likely, they take you up on that offer and you will be doing more um, uh, presentations. Um, you can provide a, a tool. You may have a newsletter or at, le at least your website to provide employers um, uh, those resources they need to pass on to their employees who are caregivers. Um, as I mentioned, the job board came up as an idea from um, Promega that their, their um, employees came up with this on their own. Um, and of course, the Aging and Disability Resource Center, if an employer doesn't know about that, um, that is an, a huge resource for uh, employees and uh, employers ought to be able to um, uh, 
provide that information to their employees. Um, or you can organize a resource fair. Um, I know when I was an employee at a corporation, we'd have resource fairs once in a while, and they were wonderful because I didn't have the opportunity to get out during the day and find out what's going on. Um, but they came into our work site and I could make connections with people. And that was huge because uh, I was raising a child with a disability and I didn't know all the different um, resources available. It was great to, to see them in person. Um, employee resource groups, those are popular and um, it makes sense that caregivers being the largest growing population of employees that um, an employer may be um, interested in starting an, an employee resource group. And then um, Truralta is um, a resource that um, uh, DHS makes available and answers all kinds of questions um, and it's free. So that's a um, opportunity for employers to not even spend a dime, but to make available to their employees information. We mentioned some national studies. Um, <clears throat> from Harvard and, and Massachusetts. And of course, AARP has lots and lots of resources. Uh, if you are talking to an employer and they need a lot of research, it's out there. Um, you, can, you can provide that for them. All right, and so really the takeaways for you today, I hope um, these are some things you take away is that you know family caregiving is issue, an issue that's going to be with us for decades to come. Um, employees are more productive and stay longer when they feel valued by the company. Work-life balance matters. So as much as a company or a supervisor can model it, support it, and have a strategy, that will be beneficial to, to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, offering some flexibility, even small flexibilities in businesses. Um, small businesses can do that too. Um, that is one thing I'll have to be honest, our group has struggled some with, somewhat with is um, finding alternatives, ways to help small businesses. So if any of you got ideas, we'd love to hear them. Um, it's big, if you're a big company, it's easier to let people be flexible and take time off. But those companies that are small or need to have that face-to-face -face person sitting there at the door or at the counter, those are, are tougher nuts to crack. So if you've got any ideas to share with us, we'd love to hear those. Um, if an employer can provide psych um, psychological safety too, making it safe for the employee to go to a manager with their concerns, um, that's huge as far as relieving stress. And they should integrate family caregiver supports and considerations into the work culture, um, into their benefits and just their system as a whole. Um, that's really, pretty much our message to them um, and they can make as big or small investments as they want. And hopefully our whole network will be there to help them. Just, um, I have to kind of make a plug for this. Harriet and I, along with two other people, um, someone from GUAR and the Respite Care Association of Wisconsin, we have got a three hour pre-conference workshop at the ADILN conference coming up. Any of you may have signed up for that. On the first day of the conference, there's an intensive session. Um, we're going to be talking about the National Family Caregiving Strategy and how um, the whole network can kind of support the things that are in the national strategy. And no matter where you work in that, whether you're an aging disability or working for an independent living center, there's something in that strategy for us all to do on this employee um, employer engagement is part of that too. So if you are going to that conference, please consider coming to our, our session there as well. We're gonna dig a little bit deeper into the, the strategy and how we can maybe work together across lines to, to achieve some of the goals in that. So does anybody have any questions for us? Thank you for, for listening to us. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and stop the webinar recording so we can open up for a live Q&A, but did just want to say thank you, Lynn and Harriet, for providing such a nice overview of this kit that sounds so practical where it has minimal 
uh, efforts to very robust efforts an employer can take and ideas how our audience can actually take this kit and go and get getting it um, implemented throughout the state of Wisconsin and other places. So I will go ahead and stop the recording.